Today, Peter Higgs and Francois Engler share the Nobel Prize in Physics for independently proposing a particle, now known as the Higgs boson, that confers mass to all other particles and whose recent discovery stands as a seminal moment of modern science. Here to discuss more about this is Professor Gordon Kane from the University of Michigan. Professor Kane, welcome. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Now, it's often that the Nobel Peace Prize and the Nobel Prize for Literature can be controversial, not usually physics, but this one was a bit controversial, wasn't it? Well, <clears throat> only in a limited sense. I think everyone is completely confident that there should be such a Nobel Prize for the Higgs um, idea and then discovery. And um, everyone agrees Peter Higgs should share in that prize. Then the question is something that in science really happens a lot, where um, lots of people are working on something, and eventually others would come up with the idea, and sometimes they come up with part of it. But I think there's a pretty strong consensus that Anglaire and Higgs sharing it is um, a reasonable and just outcome. Can you tell us a little bit about the problem that their work solved? What was the issue? that was afoot in the field of physics uh, about 50 years ago when uh, these two gentlemen proposed their theory independently of how to solve it. The, the invention of the Higgs in quantum field theory actually preceded full recognition of how to use it in solving a crucial problem. The problem was that we have this theory that's developed over decades. It has a jargon name called the standard model of particle physics, but it tells us the particles that make up everything at the most basic level, electrons and quarks, and it tells us the forces that bind them together to make uh, nuclei and atoms and molecules and flowers and espresso and people. Could you explain with a simple metaphor perhaps how uh, the Higgs field confers mass on particles? There, there isn't a good metaphor. I, I know that there's a common one that it's like walking through molasses or something like that, but it's technically wrong, that one. And the best way to think of it is not, I don't think, so very complicated. The Higgs is another particle. We have electrons, we have photons. They interact with each other. You can bounce a photon off an electron. And that's not too hard to think about normally. We, we, it, it sort of has analogies. And that's really what's going on in this. This is obviously a crucial fundamental discovery. But I suppose a lot of people would want to know uh, what impact this has on their lives in terms of any practical benefits. Or, or at least how does this uh, move uh, physics forward if it does that? The, the s standard model of particle physics, the description that we have of our world is completed by the discovery of the Higgs boson. That, that standard model has been the quest of all scientists in, or physicists for 400 years since Galileo and Kepler through Newton and, and Maxwell and electromagnetism. And it completes that theory. It's a finished, complete, locked in, well tested theory now. And that's an incredible achievement of humans to be able to understand the whole world that we see and describe it magnificently and accurately. So <clears throat> that's a big and wonderful achievement. Professor Kane, thank you very much. Appreciate your insights.